What's good YouTube and welcome to the house. Something extremely exciting is happening with Elemental Hero Stratos right now that doesn't happen very often on market and that's buyout fatigue. So we just recently had a wave of buyouts and people rushing towards it from a ban list and also the evil hero support and now we get the legendary duelist having hero support as well and Stratos is just struggling because he's actually going down in market price from all these people who have bought it out or made it it as an investment point wanting to get their money back out of it rather than scramble for more copies of it despite OTS pack 9 being shorted and having that debacle where it got replaced by OTS pack 5 for a bit so Stratos one of the most iconic hero cards one of the most loved cards going down in price currently because people want to make their money and people who usually go in investments or buyouts they have well a bunch of copies mayhaps or they they don't really want more of this card right now because they already have this card that's just my theory on it though but i think that's exactly what's happening and we see it over at 60 dollars on ebay it's not 65 too quickly i think people just want to make their sale and we see the kind of duality of the market in this as dark law starts going back up again at its ridiculous price point there were 82 and 84 dollar copies and now we see the lowest is at 92 for a german 92 also for an english and then it does rise towards that 100 again anytime dark law hits 100 i kind of have a chuckle a laugh but dark law is starting to trend back up here once again and maybe it doesn't seem that ridiculous versus malicious pain and a dusted gold's prices anymore but these are cards people usually want multiple of especially stratos at this point and i just find it interesting that wow this card that people you would think would just be oh my gosh after again hits this moment of well it's had too many buyouts so it's actually going down in price instead of up right now i want to talk about the cursed card on market miracle fusion from dr4 you would think dr4 one of the best investment sets this would do really good ever since its original release where it actually was at $30 for a while in the metagame thanks to absolute zero in the olden days well it's still at $15 with multiple available now there's many many hollow foil versions of miracle fusion but people like their old super rares book of moon anybody but this ain't a champion pack it's a dark revelation still dr4 you would think would be what would be slurped off market but the ultimate rare of course higher rarity people instantly went th through that i've just always had a thing for these super rares from dr4 and it's so weird that miracle fusion always always fails to go up on market it feels like we also do see that the ultra rares eh, they're hanging around mainly because we got a copy of it in dual power so there's an ultra rare over here just super cheap slurping out value from the raw yellow mega pack and gx versions you know what we're missing we're missing a secret rare version of this konami why don't you hook it up next up we see the marincesses and i put this mainly here because we have kim coming chaos impact and we see actually seahorse starting to rise back on tcg player i don't know if that's actual sales because we, it's still a little bit cheaper over here yet we saw it down all the way to 165 at one point so maybe a little bit of bubbling hype maybe sellers are just relisting let me know what you think of this actually why don't we just go to uh sold and then go recent first and see for ourselves what these are so oh 200 170 190 all over the place kind of what i expected but yeah actually making sales around that 180 price point and we do see it creeping back up and making sales around the 200 mark marincess i think comes together a lot more with chaos impact but i don't think it becomes the deck i think it becomes a fun deck that can top regionals i don't think it's going to be dominating the ycs scene and before i'm just wrong but we see anemone is still <laughs> i probably murdered that anemone right 25 dollars here a little bit above market price so people are actually after these cards and we see also versus its market price this going up just a little bit as well so uh we'll show kind of what the cards in chaos impact are towards the end pre-selling on tcg player but never ever pay pre-sale prices on tcg player i'm incentivized to tell you to buy cards using my tcg player link in the description down below costing you nothing extra and supporting the channel directly but i wouldn't shop pre-sales for yourself i would definitely look around for those fist of the gadgets is kind of bottoming out here for the most part except for of course scrap recycler ironic a short print would become the most costly card but scrap recycler i think for its common 
it has gone back down to about where it was we see over on ebay seven dollars is cheapest for light plays but over on tcg player again those motivated sellers scrap recycler uh, they're here and it bottomed out relatively quickly we actually see under its old market price four dollars uh, before the seven dollar one so yeah it's, it's still sticking up but you're gonna still have motivated sellers during this point and you're gonna be able to find your copies cheaper as this bottoms out but the the interesting part is fist of the gadgets as a whole bottoming out gives you this interesting look at one short print code radiator still sticking around that eight dollar mark I would get your hidden cities sooner than later this is a card with relatively low quantities and just having a playset in case you ever take interest in guru control would probably be smart for a card that people are going to chase after play sets of that's shorted within a set mathematician just speaking about scrap recycler and one card orcas combos it's secret rares up a dollar versus its market price but the gold rare uh is having trouble finding listings under you'll find a couple like this dollar one if you find other stuff from the seller so you have to shop savvy to get your deals but mathematicians overall rising a little bit on the market for its old copy this is a classic from dragons of legend dragons of legend a costly set for its sealed i would definitely consider just having your secret rare copy it's a one of and maybe having some in the back for in case it ever peeled off i just don't think it will math math man's an amazing card i i can't see it with being this generic coming off the list like that but it does eat your normal summon toon kingdom is interesting to me the secret rare is almost back to its old price of 30 just slowly and steadily rising and we almost have a 20 dollar rare now legendary duelist infamous for shorting and you know having prices that are ridiculous yes this is the most costly sealed legendary duelist by far but this rare being this up there is still pretty crazy to me it's just something to note that i came across i was like oh yeah whatever happened this was around 12 now it's around $18 and sticking to that price cyber dragon so many people are asking me if I think this still has a way forward I think cyber dragons underestimated deck as is orcas can still find the way to work with it but it is not what it once was you don't have an enabler from the extra deck they still had to play getting that card stuff by ash and impermanence and so forth but losing that consistency and power tool yeah it, it still sucks so you see people jumping ship my interesting question is do you think this will to go below 25 its original market price point being its lowest hanging around before cyber dragons got hyped i think 25 is where it really lurked at do you see the cyber orcas players dumping this card eventually and it getting to that point maybe in mass or do you think it'll just slowly stay around here or stay around 25 and not dip under i think it's an interesting look as we continue to watch it on the market Borolode Savage Dragon is dipping right now, and it's under the $30 price point for the first time in a bit. Uh, like, you can actually buy one for $29 from a Motivated Sellers, and more than just one before it's $30. I think it's hanging in there thanks to Striker Dragon, because we lost Agrippane, and the ability to synchro into this is still needed by Pendulums but i think it's hanging in there mainly due to striker dragon a lot of people jumping ship since agrapane's not there and it's not just easy bread combos you have to work for them i like this card still a lot i think it'll get its reprint at some point maybe in the march set or battles of legend the question still remains will battles of legend be before or after the wcq this year but man does this card really have it in there to stick at that $30 price point as a one of? We'll have to wait and see what Striker Dragon really brings. No materials back up towards $20. This was one of the most asked for cards in the room at Dallas. A lot of vendors didn't have it. I know DZ had actual trouble getting no materials before the event as well. I find it extremely interesting that despite Nibiru, people still are gravitating towards this card. And I did feel like it was underestimated at one point, but this this is still a card to keep your eye on slash get sooner than later if you are interested out of dark neo storm now let's go ahead and talk super dreadnought rail cannon juggernaut leap uh it got bought out and we see it at a 20 dollar price point before 24 and almost completely absent on ebay with just five listings leap is a good freaking card i think it has a lot of potential you can actually just kind of splash it in thunder as a surprise ending similar to how utopia double was 
I still think it has potential to stay, but I think we'll see it kind of trickle back down after this point. People are always going to want to sell cards that are sitting in their binder. You're going to get competition on the market, and I think it'll come back down before it gets bought out again. So I wouldn't necessarily jump at this price and say, oh yeah, it's going to disappear even further, but you never do know with the Yu-Gi-Oh market. Make your own informed decisions and come to that kind of conclusion yourself. I personally think it'll trickle back down here for a bit. And finally, I've had several people concerningly ask me, hey, John, this price seems really good early on for the Unchained Secret Rares. Like, the Ultra Rares are even more expensive. Should I jump on them? My answer is, even if you're after playsets of these cards, that's $60 playset here, a $60 playset here at the bottom, and you have a much more expensive one, which is actually the Rota sitting around $40 already. This is actually kind of where I thought this would be the expensive card, and where I thought initially it would sit. So this is interesting to me that it's that low. It does pique my interest as well. But when you start to do the math on how much this deck is going to cost, yeah, people were prepared to get hurt for it, but I would just chill out. Wait for Tier 0 to do their pre-sales. Wait for Ideal 808 to do their pre-sales. Wait even for Troll and Toad. Like, compare all pre-sales. See what happens on market. Because early on, people are trying to get 70 freaking dollars for Blue Tang. I don't think this the set will look the same afterwards. Like, I get it's a waifu, quote-unquote. I get Marincis is kind of hyped in anime. I don't think this is going to sit atop this set two months out from when the set is released. I, I do think that Abomination Prison might be it. I don't think it's going to be the ultra rares like Striker Dragon. This is not a spiral double helix as much of an enabler as it is, but 40 is pretty ridiculous. When we look through at these Unchained cards being so expensive and how many play sets you're going to have to chase after, a lot of them are going to end up in the 10 to 12 to 15 range, despite how much this sells this set they're not all gonna be winners they're not all gonna be 20 plus dollar cards so i would hold off i'd make your decisions on well uh yeah this is actually okay price on its initial market release but again i think because the deck all has so much expensive pieces in terms of rarity that it's down to come down in price the prismatics will probably carry the set similar to rira and it, it's just not the most hyped set it's not a very looked forward to set except for several cards so it'll be really cool to see how this falls out but tcg player pre-sales historically are bad and i get that seeing 20 dollars secret rares you're excited about is cool but i just think it's gonna go down from here then again sometimes you win on the pre-sale market what do you guys think of these pre-sale prices do you agree with me that they're gonna go down or do you think man that's actually pretty good, like some people are asking me right now if they should go in on. Also, what do you think of the rest of the things happening on market, such as the interesting points as buyout fatigue? I've kind of crammed a lot into this market watch compared to usual, so I hope you enjoy it. And I'll be going to the state fair today, so don't be scared to come up and say hi if you're a Texan over there at the state fair. Always willing to say hi to anybody pretty much anywhere. Thanks for watching, everybody.